The US-Japan military alliance prevents Japan from being a truly independent nation. This alliance goes back to the early 1950s and is characterized by two things. First, the United States wants Japan to increase its military power. And second, the United States wants Japan's military to be subordinate to US power, so it can serve as an extension of the US military. In this video, we will look at both of these points. Let's start with Japan building up its military. As discussed in a previous video, Japan's constitution, specifically Article 9, places strict limits on what kind of military Japan can have. One mainly focuses on self-defense. Yet the United States has never been happy with this. The United States pressured Japan to expand its military from the very beginning. The goal was to use Japan to help contain and possibly fight against the Soviet Union. Already in 1955, Washington told Japan to increase its military capabilities and cooperate strategically with the United States in East Asia. In 1960, Tokyo and Washington negotiated an important security treaty in which the United States would provide defense assistance to Japan and in exchange, the United States would be allowed to establish many military bases on Japanese soil. Washington wanted to use these military bases to launch wars in East Asia and to project power forward to intimidate China and the Soviet Union. By 1972, Japan possessed a powerful army including a modern navy and air force. Several years later, in 1978, formal arrangements were made with the United States on how to divide work between their militaries. Military exercises between the two became closer and combined operation and even combined command exercises were conducted to practice how the two should work together in a real war. By the end of the Cold War in the early 1990s, Japan's military was not only one of Asia's most advanced, Japan and the United States were also exploring on how Japanese forces could support US military operations in the Pacific. Interestingly, with the Soviet Union gone, US governments did not stop pushing Japan to build up its military and to integrate it even more with US forces. Then, in 2004, Japan passed a law that allowed for collective self-defense. This means that when a close ally of Japan is being attacked, Japan's military can come to the Allies aid. This is a big change given that Japan's constitution has always been understood as only allowing for Japan's self-defense. About collective self-defense, with the rise of China and Washington's hostile attitude towards Beijing, it is very clear what this means. It means that the, if the United States and China get into a military conflict, Japan, even when it's not attacked itself, is allowed to fight alongside US armed forces. Naturally, Washington is very happy with this. Now, in recent years, Japan has moved even closer to the United States and, in the process, undermined its own independence. According to Japan's 2022 National Defense Strategy, US-China competition is going to intensify and for Japan, the US-Japan alliance is the key pillar and cornerstone of Japan's security policy. In another document, Japan's 2022 National Security Strategy, China is also clearly designated as the major threat. The report makes the case for Japan to rapidly and dramatically increase its military spending. Yet it does not seem that this will lead to a more independent Japanese military. To the contrary, the document states that changes made by China to the current US-dominated world order is unacceptable. And it then talks about reinforcing security relations with the United States and deepening the integration of Japan's armed forces with the US military. So how does this dependence on the United States work? And how does it prevent Japan from acting like an independent country? Now it's very important to mention that this dependency goes way back, that the United States has been very happy with this, and that Washington has worked very hard to get this dependency in place. So for example, already in 1960, a previously classified American national security document concluded that because Japan's dependence on the United States is almost total in the security area and also heavy in the economic field, America is in a position to be able to exert a decisive influence on that country's international policy. 
Now, this dependency has never disappeared. In fact, with the strengthening of the US-Japan alliance after the Cold War, the dependency deepens. Japan's security and military policy in the region closely reflects that of the United States. As a result, Tokyo has to be very careful to criticize and disagree with the United States, because they need Washington more than the other way around. The dependency of Japan on America in security and military affairs comes from several things. So there's the nuclear deterrence that Japan wants. So although Japan doesn't have nuclear weapons of its own and prides itself for it, it does want the nuclear protection of the United States, and this then gives Washington leverage over Tokyo. The Japanese military is also very inexperienced and has not seen much or any combat for decades. The United States, to the contrary, has been almost continuously at war. In this way, the United States helps train Japanese forces and prepare them for war. Meanwhile, this training is aimed at integrating the Japanese armed forces into the US military. Now, of course, in practice, it would mean that Japanese forces fight under US command. With the US military being the whale and Japan the minnow, it's very difficult to imagine a Japanese general ordering US officers and troops around. The opposite, however, seems much more likely. That is why the United States is very interested in setting up a joint command structure, because they know that they will be calling the shots. Perhaps a command structure following the South Korea-US military alliance, in which US officers staff key positions, including the commander-in-chief position, would serve US interests greatly. Also, Japan uses a lot of US equipment and is just dependent on continued US weapon sales and weapons training. There are also the US military bases on Japanese soil that serve as a reminder to Tokyo that the United States has a powerful military presence in the heart of Japan. And finally, the existence of the US-Japan alliance, which creates mistrust and tensions between Japan and other countries in the region that are not part of the alliance, stands in the way for Japan to develop its own cooperative relationships with its Asian neighbors like China. And this is perfect for Washington because it means that Japan will stay on its side. Now how can Japan escape this dependency and be more independent? By loosening military ties with the United States. And to compensate for decreased US military support, Japan can build up its own military in a way more independent from the United States. It means that weapon systems and training should be built and conducted more independently. Then, with more room to maneuver politically, Japan can finally have an independent foreign policy that takes care of Japanese interests without always having to check or ask permission from Washington. Japan could even take on a more neutral position in the US-China Cold War, and by doing so, prevent it from being dragged into another US war.